Summers into her home to share the devastating consequences of COVID on her husband in caring for Derek. After 374 days in hospital, here's a look again at the moment Kate brought Derek home for the first time. Hi. 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 Hello. Where are we going? In the living room? Yeah, here we go. Um, Hello. Hello. joins us yeah. now and it's lovely to see you so lovely nice to see you sorry about too. the circumstances but it's always lovely to see you yes yeah um it's a big thing to allow the cameras into your home into your private mm. life um into derek's life into the life of your children you say you're making this for carers everywhere yes i i am i mean i think the the first documentary finding derek derek through no choice sort of found himself the focus of, of lots of people who'd got very sick. Yeah. He was the lucky ones in those early wave to have survived and not passed away from COVID. And so it, it felt like you were telling a story for a whole lot of people that was still affected as we came out of it. And so this time around, I thought, gosh, I don't just want to make it unless I feel there is something to share. And when, in those moments, you saw mm. Derek came home, we didn't really know what the next year was going to be about, but the next year has really become about uh, the challenge of caring yeah. um, and how to um, continue to progress someone to the most they can, but also accept what may have yeah. changed and the impact on the family. The extraordinary carers that are giving us support and when I started to talk about some of the struggles, of course, you immediately get flooded with the millions and millions of people that are doing it mm. that aren't lucky enough to be on television and have the chance to share it. So hopefully I'm telling the story for them. And, I mean, that's what really struck me about it, was this, the, the amount of care that he needs. I mean, this is around-the-clock, isn't around it? Around-the-clock care. And, and because of his extreme health needs, um, he does have 24-hour care, so somebody has to be awake at night and somebody has to be awake during the day, and I can't be awake for 24 hours, and so it's fantastic to have that. But some of people who, who don't perhaps have such severe health needs, the challenge of caring is still just as great, because some of the challenges are the physical moving of someone that's yeah. so restricted. He is very, very heavy. Mm. Um, and when he is tired, which is a lot of the time Absolutely. he is a dead weight so really? i do think about people that are doing that completely on, on their, their own, own. Yeah, and there are millions you know what is your day like well a day like today coming into gmb and having my hair and makeup done mm -hmm. is markedly different to what you see in the documentary because yeah. i definitely don't look at my best um i mean waking up um at home when i'm not uh, at work um is is an extraordinary thing because um if i'm if i catch him sometimes he wakes up before me but if i catch him before he wakes up you see him wake up and it makes me emotional every time and you see him realize where he is mm -hmm. and i could only imagine that when he dreams he is the person before and he wakes up and he can't really say what he wants to say and he can't really move and it's like watching this sort of cloud fall and he looks emotional and I now say, you're going through that moment, aren't you, that phase of remembering? And he says, yes. Oh, and I, it just must every be... Every day. Yes. Every day, it's a, a discovery for, for it's him. It's a discovery for him. Um, and That's so, hard. you know, that is like, I think I say, it's like watching heartbreak yeah. and your heart breaks a little on, bit every time. On repeat. But, Sorry. No, no, I was going to say, again, in the documentary, and it's extraordinarily brilliant, children are so capable and mm. so adaptable, almost the point where you just don't want them to be, but your children in particular, I mean, they're only yeah. 16 and 12, Darcy and Billy, and yet they're 
got extraordinary strength. They seem to be yeah. rallying around him, very supportive. They seem to really understand what's going on. It's incredible, actually. They're very, very instinctive. They sort of know before he does when he's flagging. They can sort of see him start to disappear. And they also they get the timing of his ability to communicate right. So, you know, both of them will say something that's happened. Billy's been re recently trying out new sport and he'll say something and then they just sort of like pause and then wait for Derek to say, proud of you. Whereas I think other people, that you want to sort of fill the gap, right. <laughs> you know, mm. and I'll sort of say, oh, I'm sure you must be tired, perhaps you can't answer. And now I've now learned that as soon as you say anything else, even if it's supportive, that, that throws him means he can't speak. So they're very instinctive, they're very loving. But it's very tough. I mean, Billy is 12. You can't really remember much before three or four. They have this very strong image of their dad or the things he would do and say to them. And now for, you know, a long time since March 2020, he has either been absent or different. Mm. So it's an adjustment, isn't it? Mm, mm. But he's there, you yeah. know? Yes. And absolutely. there's a lot of people yeah. that talk to me that say, you know, he's not there. Yeah. yeah. Um, watching watching the, the, the documentary um, and the, the steps that you take and the help, as you mentioned, the all, yeah. all sorts of help yeah. coming from all over the place. Mexico uh, is yes. a fascinating step forward. I, yeah. I, you look at that and think, and you and I think you're going again next month. Yeah. The logistics of of yeah. getting you there. I know, and that came at a really low point when I thought, oh, God, because this is not sustainable. The system, I mean, he, we can't... I don't believe that there, we can have 24-hour care forever. You know, there's, there's a point where money runs out. You know, yeah. it's, it's a big moment. I was thinking, this isn't sustainable, and if there isn't the structure there to help long-term, what are we actually going to do? You know, I can't give up. We can't give up on him and I've been doing a lot of research for the following documentary of wonderful people that contacted me and this particular doctor just had dealt with people not as severe as Derek but in the area and um, offered us the chance to be a kind of test case but you're right I mean you know he he can sustain sitting in a wheelchair for about 20 minutes before mm. he flags so the thought of going 5,000 miles seemed properly bonkers. I think Ben Shepherd was a little bit concerned about my sanity, but then got it, and then we sort of worked hard, and funnily enough, I kind of thought by the end of the journey, if nothing else comes of this, the fact that he's done this, I could already see, has said something to himself about possibility yeah, and hope. Absolutely. Have you um, noticed that since you did that, and I know that yeah. because his case is so severe, he's almost a trial for this, yeah. really. So, yeah. um, have you noticed a, a difference? Do you feel positive about next month and going back? Yes, I really do. I really do. And I feel worried about saying that because I don't want to launch false hope. And I, you know, flipping heck, if this works, I'll spend the rest of my life campaigning for it to come here and be free. Yeah. You know, so I'm not going to hold back. But I don't know really what is really working now. When he first came back, the fatigue was overwhelming, which they said was a good thing because that means sleep from a store. Now we're starting to see little by little improvements but he will need other things too he will probably need operations and he will probably need surgery because a lot of things that maybe would have happened if we'd known more about covid and if we hadn't been he hadn't been in a pandemic when it all happened mm. now they're starting to piece together what more things might be done so it's a big picture but I really hope that, that it can build. Oh, yeah. I hope so too. Sorry if I'm being too general, no, but I just no, don't want no, to, not. you know, at all. Sorry, I understand <laughs> that. Start, yeah, yeah. Thank the, you. The um, your relationship yeah. with him. How how do things change there? How are things looking there between the two of us? Yeah, because obviously it's, when you're yeah. you're a partnership and you discuss things, I think yeah. about the amount of times that I rely on Dan to talk to you about things that's happened with the kids in that day I or know. something, and you know you're holding everything up in the air and you haven't got the support of him, I guess, as like in the way you used no it. No way he wants... Exactly. And you only notice the things they did when they're not there as well. And so there is a sort of heartbreak. I'm sorry, my phone is buzzing. Don't I'm worry. Sure it's everyone it telling you how well you're doing. I'll put it under there. I'll put it under sure. my bottom. Um, <laughs> so they... Um, yes, there is a kind of heartbreak, I think, that you see the person you love in little moments mm. and then suddenly they're gone. And so you go through the kind of, he's there, but he's not there all the time. 
But um, I kind of think if it, that's bad for me, how much worse is it for him yeah. being inside there? And, yes, it's changed, but we did have a lovely moment where I kind of wheeled him to this place that he used to call the operations room, which was like a little box room, basically, <laughs> that was a study, and I wheeled him to there. And um, I showed him in because I was looking for some papers. And he said disgraceful because it was so untidy. So I know that the real Derek Draper's in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fighting to get out. Oh, well, yes. But it is strange. It's a strange thing to plough through and go through. Yeah. Forward. With all of this on your shoulders and the you know, pay, pay, paying for the care and mm. um, worrying about the family, mm. worrying about the kids, sorting that out as well, do you spend time looking after you? Are you OK? <laughs> well, I mean, you know... <laughs> fly me. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that there isn't probably a huge amount of time to have manicures, pedicures, unless you're going on air on this morning. Um, but actually, um, there's a lot... I've, I do see the very best of people. It's a really strange thing, and you learn to sort of treasure the littlest moments in a wonderful way, which is quite restorative. And also, yes, you know, children demanding work demanding, but actually they're also wonderful distractions. And I, my heart sometimes goes out to people that are at home full time on their own caring for someone, because I think that must be the most extraordinary mm. pressure on mental health. So, and also what else should I do? I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, what can you going. do? You know, what yeah. else can you do? You can't, you can't, you can't abandon people. You don't want to. Um, so you just keep going, don't keep you? Keep going. Yeah. You've had so much love and support. What's been so lovely is the response to the first documentary. So The response lovely. to this. Like, there is so much love for you and your family and just goodwill and just hoping, you know, like you yeah. say, getting through it day by day that there oh, are I'd love to bring changes. a big happy ending because I know lots of people are hoping for that, for their own happy endings. But I think maybe also what's lovely is what you learn along the way. Mm, and no hopefully I've been able to share a little bit. Lots of charities like Carers UK and, and many others say, please get it out there because mm. everyone's going to be either a carer yeah. or need care at some point in their life. And they're not, it's not necessarily when you're older. And we just have to find a way to, to make the most mm. of what we have, don't we? Send the family our love, please. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much. Caring thank for, uh, for Derek is available to watch on, on the ITV Hub. And as we said right at the very beginning, if there's one thing you're doing here is shining a light on all of those incredible people, so. yeah. unsung heroes up and down the country who Absolutely. are caring for someone. Yeah. Um, and the burdens that go with it. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.